Film audiences know my guest uh, tonight for her Oscar-nominated performance in The Color Purple. And TV audiences know her as the host of one of the most popular shows on television today. Please welcome Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. You go to Quad Cities all the time? All the time. I have a, a friend of a friend who has a house down there, and that's where my dogs are. You got where, dogs in Quad City? You're probably the only person the in the world. Dogs right? are, yeah. So, how is the Quad City? A nice, exciting, uh, like, woo, nightlife. Hey, hey Quad City whoa, dogs. Yeah. It's, it's peaceful. Yeah. Peaceful. Well, once you leave New York and certain cities, it's real peaceful. Peaceful, out there. peaceful, peaceful. Yeah. Chicago's a lot like New York. Are you ever there? No, I'm, I've never been to Chicago. Of course I've been to Chicago. As a matter of fact, I lived in Chicago. It's one of the great cities. It is a fabulous city. Yeah, it is. It's, it's just like New York, but not... Uh, it has the energy of New York, but not not quite as overwhelming, I think. It's still know? Midwestern. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's still like, hey, we, morning, Biff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We can still be surprised in Chicago. Yeah, yeah like you can this. be shocked. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I mean... Like, uh, the other day, we were doing, we were doing on my show, um, Women Who Hate Sex. And there was a That's woman. only in Chicago. Yes. See, New York. Uh, right. In New York, they, you, you couldn't do that stuff. So, <laughs> no, right? you couldn't. And so people were still, you know, when women would say things about, you know, like, it's like too many times that they would, you know, get really like, oh, my goodness, three times a day. I can't believe it. Where, like, in New York, they'd say, oh, four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me five. Yeah. You, you'd have to change that to women who hate sex with goats to do it in New York. See? Yeah. Well, no, like no. See, you know what? The thing, you know what I really think is that, you know, we all use different ways, David, of defining ourselves. And some people live in condos overlooking the lake, and some live in condos overlooking the laundromat. But basically, we're all the same. Don't you feel that? I think a lot of people live in laundromats overlooking condos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's true. also that uh, That's true. element, That's too. True. Yeah. I think, we're based, you know, your subjects, I got to tell you something. Seeing your show, I saw, uh, and you have these great titles, I saw... Uh, 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 transsexual parents you had, and, 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 and one was gay bashing. People like to go out and beat up gay guys. You yeah. had that. And then you had it. I was where, really surprised you know, by that. I'm surprised at some of the hostility. The, well, the first guy you talked to who yeah. said, yeah, we go out on Friday nights and we get some gay guys and beat them up. Did you yeah. like it? Oh, yeah, we liked it. It's like, yeah. you know, it's like, like it's playing Monopoly or something. Yeah. You know, it's like playing Monopoly. But you got subjects. And another one I saw where the whole town, all the women in the town that slept with this doctor who, oh, yeah. and they didn't know they were having sex with him. Where do you get these subjects? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's, yeah, it, they say, yeah, he was using this tool, and then we found out it was the real tool. Uh, I mean, and women have got to be pretty thick when a guy's saying, well, now that I've been examining you and he's, his tool, and his, he's combing his hair at the yeah. same time. Well, you know what I think? That's what I think. I think it's interesting. And, you know, people make fun of talk shows because we do, you know, transsexuals and their parents. But I feel that if something is going on in the world and it's happening to somebody, then maybe somebody else is interested in it. And I really do think that you can do anything with good taste. And a lot of people called up after this show that we did with all of these women in, I think, a town called Lovell, Wyoming, who'd been over years, yeah, generations. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's been, yeah, he's yeah. been having... The town doctor, yeah. and everybody kind of knew it, but they didn't want to tell anybody else. That's that's what happens to a lot of women. Weren't they suspicious, like, though? He was a foot doctor. I mean, you would think a little bit... Well, that would hap that's what happens to a lot of women. We, we don't want to get this serious, because you, you sort of give up your power, and you know what's happening. But this one woman said, I mean, she's like 67 years old, was going on all the time. She was being raped by the gynecologist, yeah. and felt really terrible about it, but then got up and, and paid the bill. You yeah. Know? I said, at least yeah. take a stand hey, and don't I pay know. the bill, yeah. for God's sakes. Yeah. And the one who, yeah, they pay Hi, a Billy. bill. Hey. <laughs> they pay a bill, and then they make an appointment for the next month. You start to get a little bit suspicious. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's true. How you been? I've been fine. I've been fine, you know. And no transsexual gay bashings in my life. <laughs> just, you know, run in the mill. How are you? And how you been? And what's happening? Well, what's okay, cooking, okay. You know? Let me just say this because uh, talk shows get a bad rap all the time about doing all these sensational things. But we also do some incredible shows that I think make a difference in people's lives. We did a show uh, with children 
of divorced parents where little kids cry because it was the first time they had a chance to express, you know, their mm -hmm. feelings about it. We did a show with people who were, you know, terminally ill, who won't be around six weeks from now. Uh, we did a show with women who you know, sort of been dumped by their husbands. And so what I think, uh, one of the reasons why people watch your show, they watch my show, is because they see something there that makes them feel comfortable and hopefully makes them feel better. And so, you know, with all the poking fun of it and everything, which I know, you know, critics like to do, and you like to make jokes about, David, but that... Uh, no, it's not easy to sit there and say, you know, transsexual bashing of children, uh, you know what I mean? And you sit who there... Who grew up with goats. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you're sitting there and you say, well, let me be serious about this. You know, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, it's but real... But to the people Christmas. that it's happening to, it's, it's very oh, sure serious. It but what but the, the, the whole issue is, if a person who has overcome being a transsexual quadriplegic who's gone on to raise children, okay, which I did that one time. Uh, then you say for your little problems, your little, you just trying to pay your light bill, then that's the least you could do. I remember one time in Baltimore, because I started out in Baltimore, I, I had to interview um, Siamese twins connected at the head. They were 33 years old. And uh, this is not to make fun of them at all. But oh, was, that's the two women. The two, I saw the two black women. Two black women who also do yeah. gospel. Yeah. yeah, right, they sing, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. One, of, one of the toughest interviews I ever had to do, and at the time, you know how television producers can be. Yeah. Uh, they say, oh, don't worry about it. Except for being connected at the head, they're like everybody else. Yeah, right, yeah. And uh, really, and I really am not trying to make fun of them, but the toughest thing I had to do, because what the producer did not tell me is that they also both spoke at the same time. So when you ask a question, and they would say, I don't know. So finally... You mean you know, they're both... It's like stereo, right? They're yeah, stereo. So then what... I hadn't intended to tell this story, but anyway, so, you know, at three minutes past the hour, you've asked 22 questions, and every answer has been, I don't know. So you know you're in trouble. You're, you're dying a slow death. And so we thought, well, we'll get their pa her mother on, their mother on. So she comes out, and... Uh, there's a, it's a bad sign when the wig's on backwards, you see. You see her, her daughters are connected by the head, and her head's on backwards? <laughs> her wig's on backwards. So this I, is good television. So I say, I say, it must, have been, it must have been devastating for every mother. I understand women come out of labor, and they count their little baby's fingers and toes to make sure that the baby's okay. It must have been terrible for you when you realize that you've given birth to these Islamic twins. And she said, oh, no, honey, I wasn't surprised. And, and, right, and I said... She wasn't surprised. Wasn't surprised. And I say, why weren't you surprised? And she said, because my husband, John, never was no good. 